Good afternoon. Thank you for your time today. My name is Rachel Massey and I was born and raised in Florida. I am the mother of two amazing children. One of my children, my nine-year-old son, is on the autism spectrum. Today you will hear personal stories from moms who have, had ch have children with disabilities and the success of their children transitioning out of high school and into the community through post-secondary summer programs and why we feel programs like these should be developed throughout Florida colleges. First, I would like to share a quote for, from the AFAA, Advancing Futures for Adults with Autism. People with disabilities are not broken and therefore do not need to be fixed. Rather, it is the social environment that must be fixed or modified so our fellow citizens with disabilities can take their rightful place among us as friends, neighbors, co-workers, and employees. Here are some general Florida statistics to help give an overview of our current environment over the last couple of years. The national average for employment for people with disabilities is 16.8%. For Florida, the percentage is much lower at 13%. 53% of Floridians with developmental disabilities live in the family home, compared with 35% of the national average. There are over 300,000 adults residing in Florida with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Here's how their living arrangements break down. 76% live with a family caregiver. 17% live with a roommate and or living alone. 7% live in a supervised residential facility. One out of three live with a caregiver over 60. This breaks down to over 77,000 adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities who will need care and a place to live. There is also the financial income loss of the family caregiver who has to leave the workforce to take care of their disabled family member. One of the things you will hear about today are summer residential programs on public college campuses which are, give our children the real world exposure and practice needed to master independent living skills. Programs like these can potentially save the state millions of dollars on future care. The rule of thumb is a dollar spent on preparation saves $7 in future expenses. With more than 77,000 adults with disabilities in Florida needing care and a place to live, the time has come to expand the concept of early intervention. It should include our children's young adult years. I had the pleasure of getting to know these five moms who understand this and will share their children's positive and game-changing experience with you and what we hope to accomplish through partners and policy making. Thank you. My name is Kathleen Williams. My son CJ is 21 years old. He has autism. Last summer he participated in a summer experience program at Arc Jacksonville. During the four-week program, he learned to be more independent than he has ever been before. He had a weekly budget. With lots of supervision, he planned menus, shopped, and even cooked. He learned to cross a busy street, how to take a public bus. He went to the zoo, a baseball game, and the movies, all on the public bus. He lived in a four-bedroom, four-bath apartment with two other participants and one peer mentor who is a college student. Prior to this experience, he had never been away from home for more than four nights. He loved every second of everything about the program, especially the freedom. His favorite thing changed from the pool to the girls to just hanging out with the guys. He didn't want to leave. He wants to go back. He wants to move out. The best and most exciting part of this for our family is how many of the skills have carried over into our home life. He does his own laundry, does some cooking. He's responsible for his cell phone. For the first time ever, he takes his own medication. And most importantly, he feels more independent. This program is amazing. It is also cost prohibitive. It costs $3,900 for four weeks. Few people can afford it. We couldn't. It is self-pay. We were lucky to have a benefactor cover my son's cost. Most people do not have that option. Good morning. My name is Kathy Anderson. I'm the mother of three boys, 17, 20, and 22. 
My husband and I have been residents of Palm Beach County for the last 30 years. We currently reside in Jupiter, Florida. Michael, our oldest son, graduated from high school last year with a special diploma and now attends a groundbreaking program at Florida Atlantic University called the Academy for Community Inclusion. It is several different certificates that it offers. Um, he is considered a full-time student at FAU and over the next two years he will be working on one certificate in independent living. It will require a summer residential program. Michael currently lives at home, attends school, and works part-time at Publix. Michael looks like a typical college student on campus. If you were to pass the six-foot-two, blonde-haired, brown-eyed young man, he'd be smiling, and you would not suspect he has significant cognitive disabilities that we refer to as challenges. Though learning has always been hard for Michael, Michael loves to learn. This is huge. It doesn't matter that he reads at a third grade level, has difficulty with the concept of time and money, difficulty with reading and executive functions. Michael can use a computer, he types his assignments, uses PowerPoint, and he loves spell check. So do I. <laughs> his favorite pastime includes learning about history, politics, and watching TED Talks. If he were here, he'd have 100 questions for you, what you do, and what your background is. <clears throat> Michael is very engaged in the family life and eager to please. He is first to come out to the car to help unload groceries. He knows where all the dishes go when he empties the dishwasher, does it without even being asked, and helps with laundry. Many other things, watering the plants, mowing the lawn. Michael says he'll take care of us when we're older, and he promises he will never put us in a nursing home. We often go visit people in nursing homes. Sounds like a great aging in place plan. He has no idea how often we think about planning for his future to prepare him for a successful life when we are no longer here. As a 22 year old, he needs guidance to help him through his day. <clears throat> he does not drive, but he can walk, ride a bike, and he's learned to navigate Palm Tran, the door-to-door -door service. When they're late, he doesn't mind giving them a call on the phone to ask them where they are, even though they give him a 30 minute window because he doesn't know how to tell time and he sets reminders in his phone, he still gets anxious about time. He gets mixed up about denominations of money, so he'll always need some help with that. We're still looking for additional supports. Um, but he knows the importance of saving and doesn't spend foolishly, but he will have to have someone help look after his finances. Every day he is learning and building on his skills. The next few years, our goal is to help him live independently so we can help him transition while we are still healthy and are capable of being an active part of the process. Michael's a really neat young man and a joy to be with. We do not want him to be a burden on society or even his brothers. He does need help though. He needs to learn how to live independently with supports. We are actively working on this. We need help. We have a long way to go. This is our story. Thank you for listening. Hi everybody, thank you for your time. Um, my name is Max Taylor's mother. Um, I also go by Kimberly. And uh, I am the parent of a 19 year old boy. He's beautiful, uh, engaging. He is funny, he loves music, um, loves movies, loves TV, loves animals. Um, and what you've heard some stories of parents with children with different sets of abilities and skill levels and different sets of needs. Uh, Max does not walk or talk on his own. And our transition program as it exists is not expansive enough. And we need help. We need guidance to help redesign and redevelop the transition program so that it is available to kids as they age out with every level of need and every level of skill. Um, and and an opportunity to seek out their abilities so that they can contribute. Um, we are asking for your strong support forming a steering committee so that we can develop these quality sustainable programs to help individuals with disabilities of all different types to transition either into independent living or into a situation where they can seek the highest quality of life and the constitutional right to pursue happiness just as we all do. Um, this is a huge undertaking, working together organizations such as public school districts, uh, university exceptional student education departments, evoke rehab, 
uh, Stand Up for Independence, other advocacy groups, CARD, uh, the Center for Autism and Related Disabilities, career sources, housing authorities, we can pull together and put together a best practices program. We don't have the time or the resources to reinvent this wheel. And I really appreciate that statement. Um, but we do have the resources as a community to help put the missing cogs in the wheel and make it turn better for all of our kids. Thank you very much for that. Hello, my name is Carmen Nunan. I'm the house parent of three children. Patrick is my youngest child. Um, he was born 11 days early than his due date. I don't know what was the rush, uh, but probably he knew that he, his due date landed on Valentine's Day, and he didn't want to ruin it for me and my husband. Anyway, Patrick um, who, uh, developed what you call typical develop the first 18 months of his life, and he reacted negatively to the MMR vaccine, and he started regressing. He lost eye contact, he lost speech, and all that typical milestone up to that point. So we went doctor after doctor, test after test, nothing conclusive. So for three years, he didn't have a diagnosis. And it was heartbreaking not dealing or dealing with the unknown. So we concentrate and focus on what can we do to help him. So we surrounded by a team of different professionals and parents, and here our journey began. Pretty much when a doctor told us that he was never going to talk, he was never going to learn, and then we needed to be realistic and look into a group home. We didn't know what that meant, but we didn't like him, so we didn't go back to the doctor. So forward to 2010, uh, that's when we moved here to Florida. Um, it was during the transition time when our son told the case manager that his goals were go to college, uh, to get a good job, to meet his future wife, and then have children. So how we were going to be possible, you know? Uh, by this point, he had to uh, gain a lot of or learn new things, and. So we just kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, I was supposed to be retiring by then, and we have to go back into the train, into the back, and, and look for things. Um, Patrick is a hardworking person. He's very positive. He always has a smile uh, on his face. And during all this time that he didn't talk for three years, there was something that needed to remain on his life, and it was music. We never understood how can he doesn't talk, but he will sing. You know, and music was used to transition, etc. So we kept that in mind. And when we did his path, um, <coughs> it was uh, pretty much when he found his voice. And uh, we kind of like, uh, remember yesterday when they talk about what is your child's passion, what is your child's, what does he like to do, so use that as a strength. So anyway, as I was saying, he's a hardworking person, so he really wanted to go to college, and it took him six years to complete all the requirements to graduate with a standard diploma so he could con be considered for college. Um, he was in choir, so the director of the music department of the Indian River State College goes and visits the high school once a year trying to recruit the students. So he was invited to audition for the music program. I'm happy to say then, he hit a jackpot. Not only he was accepted into the program, he also was granted a credits and a scholarship. Um, so he now is attending uh, Indian River State County. And uh, during that transition period from graduation to the fall, we were like, what are we gonna do? You know, we worked hard and he had come a long way, but he didn't know what he was ready to go to college. How is he was going to transition from class to class? Was he going to be aware of time? To be on time on class? Because when I was looking at the syllabus with him, I mean, you're not on time, goodbye. You know, zero attendance. Uh, so I had all these questions. Is he going to be able to keep his restricted diet? Uh, if he had an issue, where is he going to go? So we were kind of trying to wonder because the other two children the only thing that we have to do was everyone give them the credit card, and here they go. They did everything on their own. So for us, it was a learning experience as well. So when we don't know what to do, we usually get together, put our heads together, 
and something happened. Now, answer to our questions was SOAR. It's a summer opportunities for adult readiness. It's a residential program that offers career exploration and post-secondary opportunities. The students, when they qualify, they go for two weeks. They are young adults with autism. They live on the dorms at the FAU campus. The program focuses on employment, executive function, independent living, social skills, self-determination, financial management, and good health practices. So the best positive experience that he had, he loved it, and really attending to this program, he gave the, our son the necessary skills and the confidence to attend college on the fall. Um, that uh, preparation really was very welcome because we didn't have to ask for an additional person uh, or do much on our part. So when classes started, he was really like a pro. You know, he was very confident. He was able to do all the transition that he needed. He knew when to do if a class was canceled. He went to his consular's office, etc. Uh, that also had a cost. It was for two weeks over $2,000. Then we didn't have safe. But because he was a client of vocational uh, rehabilitation services, they were able to pick up the deal. Um, Patrick always had loved music. Music is his passion, and he's very good at it. So we're very happy to share with you then because of the opportunity you know, he finished his first semester with a B average. He took six classes. Uh, five of them were music. That's what I think he got a B average. And this uh, semester, um, he's only taking four because he had shared with us that he wants to be like a college kid and have time to just join class and be with his friends. So it's been a very interesting process. Uh, there is help out there, but our hope is that families find about all these resources and work uh, with what is offered in the community. Uh, it has helped our son really, really much. I have a picture that is not very clear, but this is a picture that he happily had with his dad when he graduated from high school. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brenda Grella. You've heard the statistics and you've heard our stories. There are thousands of stories like ours that you haven't heard. A steering committee can address the needs of global disabilities community from those who are blind, have seizure disorders, the developmentally disabled, those with autism or mental illness. There are several independent living transition projects throughout the state, public and privately funded. With limited resources and limited trained staff, we think a steering committee can help define best practices and highest utilization of funds and resources. We are asking for your support in the development and funding on this steering committee to begin as soon as possible to address this growing need. Thank you.